So for um, <clears throat> number three, they want us to take the area bounded between these curves and then rotate it about the y-axis. So I've gone ahead and drawn them. Um, that's the cube root of x, which is um, y equals zero, which is the orange line. Then we have the cube root of x, which is in pink. And lastly, x is equal to one, which is in light blue. So when we're revolving this about the y-axis, um, we are taking here, let me use a different color. We are taking this height where it touches the pink curve and then we're revolving it like so. And now this is going to form a cylinder, but it's an empty cylinder. So think of taking a sheet of paper and then wrapping it around um, the Y axis. And then as we can see, <clears throat> as we move on the curve here, we're gonna get these different cylinders like so. Right, um, And our volume is basically going to be the sum of all these cylinders. So let me go ahead and put in this equation. So the volume is the sum, well, we go from 0 all the way out to x is equal to 1. So from 0 to 1 of ax dx. And ax being, um, when we take the cylinder here and we unwrap it, think of a sheet of paper, we're going to have an area, right? And so we have to think about what this area is as a function of x because it changes as we go along the x-axis, right? We can see that as we go on um, to the positive side, the cylinders get bigger and bigger for this exercise. So um, let's, let's talk about it. Now, the base here of my sheet, we can see that it's just the, uh, the circumference of my cylinder, right? So... The, the circumference of any circle is given by 2 pi r. And let's just think about what the radius is. Well, in this case, um, the radius is the distance from 0 all the way out to wherever I'm at on my x-axis, right? Um, so wherever I'm at on my x-axis, that's going to be my radius. Like if I'm, um, if I'm in a, you know, have a smaller, closer to the y-axis, my radius is going to be smaller. Um, that's going to give me a cylinder like this and so on. So we can see here that the, the circumference is just 2 pi x, x being the radius of my circle, right? As I go on um, the x-axis, the radius gets bigger and bigger, and so does my circumference. Um, okay, and let's talk about the height. Well, the height is wherever it just touches this pink curve, um, and the distance between this pink curve all the way out to the x-axis. It's just this height over here. Um, and as we can see, for example, the smaller one, it's wherever it touches the pink curve all the way to the x to the x axis, and it's just a smaller distance, right? And so it's just whatever the height of the function is at a point in x. So we can see that my height is described by this curve over here, um, x to the one third, because that's the third root of x. Therefore, my a of x, my area is two pi x times x to the one-third, which is equal to 2 pi times x, um, and that's 4 over 3. And so this is my area, right? Therefore, my volume is the integral from 0 to 1 of ax dx, so this uh, area. I'm just going to put the 2 pi outside because it's a constant. 2 pi outside, and then we get the integral of x to the 4 thirds times dx. And so when we integrate this, um, when we integrate it, we get 2 pi outside, and then we are going to go x uh, 4 thirds plus 1, that gives us 7 thirds, um, and then times 3 sevenths, and all of this evaluated from 0 to 1. Um, <clears throat> now we only have to evaluate the upper boundary, right, because the lower boundary is 0, and so this is just 2 pi um, 3 sevenths times 1, which gives us 6 pi over 7. So that is our volume um, when we take the area bounded between these curves. And I actually, I should have shaded that, that in, which is this area over here. And then we revolve it about the y-axis um, with a bunch of cylinders that have an area as a function of x.